Hey guys, and welcome to my confessions part two. I'm, I hope you get the link. First time last year, I was doing my confessions part one. Now we're on to the confessions part two. Um, I was invited back by EA to build yet again for them. So first of all, I wanna say thank you very much to EA for asking me back, the Sims team, um, and all of the gurus that I got to work with. This was, of course, again, another amazing experience and something that I wasn't expecting for a second time. So I'm like super happy. Like the first time, maybe I was like, OK, I lucked out. I'm one of the very few builders uh, from the UK. So I got asked for cottage living. But to be asked back based on previous builds was super duper yeah it was like a thumbs up so thank you very much for asking me back and it was an honor to build in this new world of tartosa for the sims 4 my wedding stories not gonna lie um i when i first heard the title i thought that it was maybe like a link back to my life story things from sims 2 but not it's, it's not i don't think there's any link uh, but yeah, that is the pack. Um, it is going to be out tomorrow for you guys on the 17th. Um, I'm recording this on the 15th and I don't have access to the game just yet uh, to show you like what the final lots are going to look like. But I do have past footage to show you all and I just want to do this video. It's going to be a long one, so get your popcorn, all that good stuff. Um, and I'm just going to say at the beginning, this is not final software. This was a super early access that all the soft, all of the footage that I'm going to be showing you, it's going to say that on the screen annoyingly lots of time. This is going to be my, um, what is it? My username bouncing all around the screen as well. You know, the usual stuff that happens with alpha access. And yeah, I just wanted to kind of lay out, I thought for this one, like last time, I didn't record any of the process of doing speed builds. I just, as I said, long after this video, you finish watching this video, I just want the builds to be the best that they can possibly be. And most of the time that means taking the pressure off of making sure I don't spin the camera around and just getting the build perfect. So yes, the struggle was real with lots of these builds. You will definitely see with the third and final lot that the struggle was really real. So I'll show you every step of the process of that one. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come on and tell you what the first initial brief was for each lot. Um, the majority of this is not gonna have my face on it. This is future me, current me doing this little intro, but past me was living her best life on holiday and didn't have time or, well not time, didn't have the equipment to do face cam. So um, the majority of me talking through the lots is gonna be without face cam, but each introduction and each time I tell you about briefs, they are gonna be with my face this one so without further ado let's get in to lot number one quick little extra note which i almost forgot to do and i'm about to finish recording is that um i have been alerted that some changes have been made due to performance issues from these builds so these are the you're going to see everything that i submitted this will be heavily let's put asterisk subject to change for performance issues so there may be stuff that has been removed i haven't seen it myself yet to know how much has been removed but yeah just be aware that the final version may look a little bit different to the ones that i'm showing you today spoiler alert lot number one would be which way is it that i can't do it the thing can, this one um this was the fancy villa and I, this I think was my first choice. Uh, normally you get like a choice you put through, put down which slots is like your first, I think fifth choice is what we did this time. And so we had like screenshots of the, of the current state of the world, what it looked like and some inspirational images as well and you had like a full brief. So I'm gonna like read you out and maybe I'll put on the screen, I don't, I'm not too sure. Let you know what the first initial brief was. So they all each have like this naming convention, each lot has a special name. So this was GP11 underscore CV underscore 
R-E-S-O-2. So this is basically residential lot uh, number two in the coastal village. It is a 50 by 50. And the suggested rooms was four bed, two bath, and it was for the Laurent family. Um, so they had like visual suggestions of grand building with beautiful fountains and gardens. And um, you can't see it right now, but around the back there is there's lots of fountains and gardens. So um, I definitely took that one on. So the story behind this one is that it's a palatial and luxurious villa with a large amount of tree lined space in the front. Now I didn't really do tree lined space in the front. Went more around the back because it's 50 by 50. It's a bit of a weird one. Um, owned by Hector and Greta Laurent, they live there with their two children and Hector's mother, Arnessa. Some say that the um, family, I think it's called the Thebs, I, don't, I wasn't going to read this out because I was like, Nerd, can I say the name properly? Arnessa Theb? Theb or Thabe? I'm thinking Theb. Um, are descendants of Princess Cordelia and <laughs> a pirate lover. And that this villa was paid for by a stash of pirate gold. So there's a little bit of law for you. I did get the honor of having a build that had a quite a bit of law in. Uh, so I had a few requirements for this lot, which would be to link back to all of that law about Princess Cordelia. I had to use everything that uh, came with base gain that was by Princess Cordelia. So there's Princess Cordelia bust, uh, Captain Shaz McFreely's galleon, don't know what that one is maybe it's a cupboard or something land coral garden painting blooming beauty painting princess cordelia bookcase uh, bathtub beds english tea set piano and butler's closet so i used all of those items in the build which you're going to see in a little bit but um yeah apart from that that was the full initial brief there was yes some images but it was just a kind of suggestion and um i decided to go with this build, which is the same shape of as a build I already have on the channel, but everything else is about it. It's completely different. So I went more Italian villa, I'm going to say. I think we're, I, for me, we're in Tuscany somewhere and that's what I went with. So I'm going to pass over to past self to talk through the first initial draft. Okay, hopefully future me has decided to do some kind of fancy intro with face cam unfortunately past me well not unfortunately past me is on holiday um so we have no face cam but we are gonna get through this we're recording on the laptop so also excuse me if the audio is a little bit off uh but we're in a very big echoey room but anyway let's get into this so house number one this is draft on this is was the working title was Fancy Villa. Um, so I'm just going to kind of show you around my first draft and then we're going to get into the changes that were requested. So here is the Fancy Villa. Um, let's let's play it so it's moving. And yeah, this for me was inspired by awesome like Tuscan villas. Uh, the area is meant to be Mediterranean, so that was the theme I wanted to go for. I've done a build with a similar shape, like the, the overall outside shape. Um, so I took inspiration from that because I knew that kind of worked already and then just kind of built off of that. So this is like my fully fleshed out draft one. It, of course, it did look different along the way, but this is the version that I submitted um the house as you can see very huge um i got inspiration on pinterest for for this little kind of nook where you have the stairs coming either side so i wanted to fit that in there was like kind of a few elements i wanted to fit in the shape of the house was one um this stairway with the two stairs coming over and the fountain in the middle that was another thing um, and then of course the brief said gardens and fountains so I think you can agree we've put in gardens and fountains um, and then I thought it would be cute maybe you could hijack this place and have a wedding here if you wanted to um, so all the seating here and the runner for getting married it's like the aisle runner and again up here um, in this first draft, I have used live edit objects all over the place. You will notice, so this is like 
fully fleshed out. Um, and I've got to say, like looking back on the first draft, I'm still happy with what the first draft looked like. Um, there's not too many visible huge changes um, from this draft to like the last draft, but I'll just show you through, I'll go through the house. We have the entranceway here comes through, you know, obviously you've got your um, suit of armor, it's pretty standard every fancy villa, right? And then you go through into the living room along here, um, an extra bathroom. Um, don't ex please excuse my uh, sim. He is just well, was my playtesting sim on this lot. And then you have an office here for the father of the household. He gets the view out into the fountain as well. So he gets the cool view out here. You know, it's not too bad of you to work to. And then we have the dining room with another sitting room in here. And we go through to like a, just a, like a bar area, chill out. And then we have the kitchen on the side as well. Very traditional. This little like thing, I thought I it would be an addition to the house. So that's why it's like different texture of wall, also different uh, windows as well used. So this is meant to be like a later addition onto the house, which you know, I'm a bit of a fan of those. And then we go up, we have the master bedroom and the focus on here was to try and bring a few hints to the um, ethnic background to the two parents that live here. So um, the husband is half Chinese and um, the wife is Indian. So we wanted to kind of bring a few influences. So you have some of the Chinese, luckily they were adding in items for a Chinese wedding as well. So we had a few little nods to that, the room divider. And then also I put the seating out here was a new like um, Indian inspired uh, swatch on this colorway, on this colorway, on this love seat. So that was what I was aiming for on this one. I kind of kept in my mind that maybe the grandmother lives here and I think she's meant to be like from the local area. So I wanted this route to be traditional and because she's still alive, um, they didn't want to be disrespectful. So they kept the house in its original state and they kind of had only injected their personality into the master suite because the mother is still alive and she's living here. So that was, that was, that was my main aim. And of course, like every fancy villa, I have put in seating areas everywhere possible um because yeah it's just seating areas when in doubt put a seating area or a plant that's my motto we have another bathroom here and then we have the kids bedroom which is in here and then nothing too special i want to keep this with uh still keeping like the same vibe of the rest of the house but it does look like a kid lives there uh, then we go upstairs and we have the grandmother's suite. So she is into painting and she also loves the color green. Uh, so I filtered by the color for the wallpaper. The wallpaper is technically green. So the grandmother will love it up here. She's got a nice green room. And yeah, she's, she can kind of chill out here. She doesn't really need to mix all the time with the rest of the family if she doesn't want to, because she's got like her seating area up here. And then she has, I think my favorite bathroom of the house. She has this ensuite, which I think is pretty, pretty stunning. And um, yeah, I'd be spending all of my time in here because it looks pretty good. And then another hallway. What's cool about this one is uh, there's this atrium here and it goes all the way down. It looks light all the way down into the ground floor. So it could maybe be at risk of um, being a bit too dark down there. Uh, but this is able to like bring all the light in. And of course, like now the like sun is setting, that it's going lower. I think I think we'll agree the sunset is pretty stunning, that kind of orangey glow. And yeah, it goes all the way down through to here. And during the daytime, like the sunshine goes all the way down to the ground floor. Um, and then uh, last but no means least in here was the teenager's bedroom. And 
yeah, that we're, I'm going to show off a few of like the changes and everything. Maybe I'll talk about them while we're still in draft one or but overall, I was really happy with the first draft. Um, I struggled a lot when it came to the exterior and the colors. Um, this world is heavily tinted blue, so this may look white, but this is actually the yellow swatch. Uh, but I tried pink, I tried brown, I tried green, I tried blue. I, I tried every color possible. I struggled with that, but I'm really happy with the way it turned out the new windows of course work perfectly with it and then combining the new windows with the new um, balconies and even to the base game because uh, this build only contains base game plus the new pack so of course there are limitations on what you're going to do just based on the fact that you it is a limited pack build but i was super happy with the way this turned out i was so excited to be able to use live objects and I think it was great because it would keep the cost down. You have like more kind of decorative little things you can put on. As you can see, like I've used this statue here in the middle, um, which is from Live Edit Objects and all of this gardening. I've tried to keep the amount of plants limited so that I wasn't going too far over. But yeah, um, I am now going to flash forward to my final draft because this one didn't have too many um, changes throughout. So yeah, now we're going to flash forward to the final draft and I'll talk you through all of the changes. Okay, here we are in the final draft. Uh, the whole process, it went through three different rounds of critique and then we submitted the final one. So this is the final one that I submitted. There are a few tweaks. I don't know if you spotted one already, but um, yeah, I'm going to go through this one. Hopefully you remember what it looked like before. Right. So first one, while I'm still looking at the line of the roof, would be that I had the kind of um, Spanish. I think they're Spanish Hacienda kind of style thingies. Here we go. We had these up here and they felt like maybe a little bit too decorative. Is there something simple? And without the use of move objects, I really couldn't make this one work. It looked a little bit strange. I liked this extra detail because it picked up on it. I had the same color as that and it kind of connected it together, but it felt like maybe it was a little bit too decorative. So that one got kicked to the curb. Um, the main big change that you'll notice now is that all of my live edit objects got removed so this is a spoiler for the other two lots uh we found out after we submitted the first draft that live edit objects weren't allowed so i had to go through and strip all of the live edit objects uh because they just weren't allowed for performance reasons they weren't allowed because um, they are not optimized for gameplay they can look pretty in the world, but they're not optimized for lots that you have gameplay on. So we had to go through and strip them all. First of all, I was slightly distraught, some may say, at the prospect of getting rid of all of my items, but I think it ends up looking better. I think maybe it... If, for a regular build, sure, but I know that this needs to be for lower end uh, spec computers as well. So I'm happy that I was able to do this build and it still be workable for those people um, and also console players and I've done you another build, you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah, the main thing is live edit objects were gone. Um, I have a little list here written down on all of my notes that I got basically throughout the process. So the first one being live edit objects were removed. Um, also removed the roof pieces, that's correct. And then um, was to make the wing more integrated. So this was a little bit further out and it looked like it wasn't really part of the house. I know I said it was an addition, but still it kind of needed to look a bit more considered. So literally all I did was smush it in by one tile and it helped to integrate it. So we've just rejigged the kitchen 
so that it all still fits in there. So it's pretty similar, but it's just one tile um, shallower to make it not stand out so much from the rest of the building. Um, the next thing was, oh, the terraced furniture. They felt like maybe it was a little bit too festive, um, more, more appropriate for an Indian wedding, of course, than it would be normally just on your terrace. So we did something a little bit more terraced patio like and used just these uh, base game ones in here. So I think they fit really well. Um, and I think they suit the area a little bit better than the other ones. I was trying to kind of inject the a little nod to the ethnicity of the, the mother that lives here. But um, sometimes it's kind of like shoehorning things in for which aren't appropriate for the job. So I think, yeah, it looks it looks better as just regular patio furniture. Uh, then the next thing we had to do unfortunately was remove the wedding setup that was here um for gameplay reasons i think it's a little bit odd when you have um for example a wedding on a venue that you don't have permission to have a wedding on so if you like just randomly pick this lot to have a wedding on and you didn't have the homeowner's permission the wedding is a little bit you know they don't like what you're doing i think you kind of are trespassing and they're saying you're doing inappropriate things so we've decided to remove that um, incentive and uh, just turn this into a normal like you can call this I'm gonna call this like a rotunda or a folly ish um, so yeah this this part I redid uh, because in the first one the pillars they noted were floating and I don't know how, but I think I managed to copy this top bit and put it on the ground and it still had the roof trim on. Uh, so I think that's why stuff floated. So yeah, I redid this. So it's just on a platform and your Sims can just step up here and they can just sit down this little seat. Again, llamas are like, the sale of llamas is part of the law of the world. So I just coincidentally, I didn't mean to, I put these in and um, what uh was told that they are very much appropriate for the law of the world so um tick for that and then we have what's the next part um oh i talked about columns not floating already and then also after draft one it was kind of mentioned maybe would be a good good practice to maybe remove some of the flowers that are in here because um performance <laughs> like I stripped out quite a lot of them before it had the lavender going all the way around but I kind of kept it minimal we have like a few one two three I think four maybe five different plants and I've used like different swatches like this is yellow here this is the same flower so I've just tried to keep it I know that if I place one of these or if I place 10 million it doesn't really matter because they are instant, so it doesn't affect performance, uh, luckily. Uh, so yeah, I just try to, try to limit the use of my flowers a little bit more. I learned that from Building for Cottage Living, that you can do some really nice landscaping if you limit yourself to the number of plants that you use. Um, and then, of course, the fountains. We still have lots of fountains here, and I've added in this light ball. We didn't have that on the first go round, so um, some lots some of the items in uh, the house were like placeholders because we didn't have the final items yet. So that was one that I got to add in along the way. Uh, also, I had placeholder lounges in the first draft, and I got to add these in. So you've got your little decorative. Looks like you you do actually use these out here. I really really like these ones of the hinge detail and everything. And then what else have we got? Um, the monkey bars was the last one. The monkey bars were just trapped in with lots and lots and lots of trees around them. So we've just pared back a little bit and just left one tree next to it. A little bit of shade for you and uh, your kids can still use monkey bars. I want it still to look like there was a child living here and it's very difficult to try and add kids stuff into something that's meant to be so fancy you know it's so so we've got a little bit of kids stuff and then i also put some planters here for the teenager because she likes gardening so we put out some planters here so 
this is kind of like the little mini kids area and then of course the rest is super fancy and formal so then we move into the interior and the one of the only changes i think down here was i had the princess cordelia tea set here as a as well i think it was a placeholder for me in my mind because i knew this tea set was coming and i got to replace it with the new tea set that comes with the game this little english tea set i think people were like why don't we have an english tea set in uh cottage living but it's finally here um so i can't wait to use that i haven't got to do any gameplay whatsoever i'm not gonna lie i've just been focusing on building so i'm excited as well to get to play all of this stuff uh, another little mini change was the kids bedroom there used to be a striped wallpaper here and um, every time you like put in a new wallpaper, it takes more processing power. Um, I think they call them draw calls and it wasn't really the extra performance costs weren't worth just the, the feature wall in this. So decided just to make this the same color as the rest of the place. Uh, so yeah, that was just tiny performance things. like. If you'll notice uh, on the build that inside of the um, chimney breast, I've actually put the same like plaster work that's outside, I've put inside the chimney breast. Um, that's to keep the uh, performance working properly, performance working properly, words I can't. Um, that's to make sure that there's not extra wallpapers hidden. So you won't find any of like the default drywall here because that just counts as another wallpaper so it's better to put this wallpaper that's on the outside also in the chimneys and cut down on performance costs um then also some notes were that the teenagers room before looks super duper serious which i completely agree with and they suggested maybe lighter uh, curtains or floor or furniture and I decided to run with a little spin of a story thinking that maybe the teenager uh, you know she's older she got uh, she gets you know a certain more responsibility and privileges than the child does so she got to go out and pick all of her own furniture so she went modern this is the only room that has modern furniture the kids bedroom as you can see is still traditional because he doesn't get so much of a say of what his actual furniture is but the teenager she does she gets to say and her favorite color is green and we still managed to keep everything green but it looks so much more inviting before it was kind of a little bit depressing some may say and we didn't want it to be depressing it was going to be a little bit more youthful and young and as you can see she is a total Bob pancake stand because we all are um and then just another general thing that I had to do was in the hallways I had a lot of lighting on the walls as well as this gallery lighting uh but art direction really liked the gallery lighting and maybe thought I could get rid of some of the wall lights. Again, wall lights or lights in general are very performance heavy. They need a lot. You have the light shining there. You've got the shadows that are a result of them. There's a lot of calculations and performance that goes into lights. So that's like one of the major things that you always try to do is reduce the amount of lights in the end. Um, so yeah, that's like just got rid of some of the wall lights and left all the gallery lighting because they look super cool, like with the light just going down the wall. Um, yeah, and that was all of the changes that I did. Generally, I kind of looked around last minute and deleted out like some seating that was up here. Um, just if it wasn't necessarily worthy or I kind of ditched it at the last draft because um, it was better if I removed stuff than the team have to kind of go through and guess what to remove. So I've tried to, I've tried to cut down as much as possible. So this isn't the final final version. I don't know what the final final version will look like until the game comes out, but um, you have this here and yeah, I'm just super pleased with the way it turned out actually. It's really pretty similar to my first draft. So yeah, I think it's cool. And of course, if you want to, you can still hijack 
this place and put in your own wedding venue and just just call it a day. Um, the family that lives here, the Laurent family, are the people that are involved with doing all the weddings in uh, the world. They are wedding organizers, wedding planners. So, you know, it would be only right if you just hijacked their house. But anyway, so I'm going to move on now to the second lot. Maybe future me will be here or maybe it'll still be past me. See you in a bit. number two would be the forest wedding venue that was what it's called so i'm going to go through the full brief of what i got so naming convention gp11 underscore f i underscore w e d o two so gp11 forest inland wedding venue two so i don't know if there was one previous but this was number two um so yeah forested inland 40 by 50 lot um and no household of course because this is a wedding venue which is new with this pack um it hasn't been in the game before so you'll get wedding venues i'm pretty sure that's being patched into base game as well so even if you don't have this pack and you're just on base game you can still play and plan i think you can still have wedding venues now uh, i think that's been added so visual suggestions were a mix of indoor and outdoors space greenery and floor decor so this lot uh, was huge to do and I definitely wanted to do indoor and outdoor so I'm not going to talk too much about what I actually did because you're going to see the whole thing but yeah indoor and outdoor space and then the story with this lot was an indoor reception wedding hall that also has an outdoor wedding reception hall as well venue has been in Arnessa's family for a long time so this was the Laura family um, the grandmother there Arnessa Theb I think she's Theb I'm gonna have butchered the name. I didn't, don't think in the live stream I saw them say their name, but um, it has been in the in Arnessa's family for a long time, so they own this. They are like the wedding moguls of the world. They're the people that own all of the wedding uh, venues and stuff. So it's been in the family for a long time, so it's a generational go-to for the area. Somewhat historical, not modern, maybe a little museum-y question mark so that was like my brief requirements place to put cake food uh bathrooms wedding venue speaker wedding arch guest seating aisle carpet runner changing rooms instruments um in brackets piano instrument or months you know one or multiple and the suggestion firefly or pond ones that one i could say i did not do um there is no pond in this one so i couldn't do pond swans um but yeah the brief as you can tell is kind of very loose uh there isn't a huge um restriction on what you want to do so you kind of get these and you just go away and you come up with your first initial plan there are a few like visual cues but nothing concrete so um what you see was what came out of my brain and what got what triggered me from this whole like list of things in the brief so without further ado i will pass you over to past self that is going to talk through everything that happened in the making of the forest wedding venue and here we are in the wedding venue this was a big undertaking this 50 by 40 lot um to fit in with this world so this is draft one let me give you the little tour excuse my sim here this is my testing sim and excuse the mailbox that will not be there when you um open up your game i just kind of needed a testing sim here and uh yeah so this is residential at the moment when you get it it's going to be classed as a wedding venue but yeah this is draft one with this build i really only had okay you're just gonna go and play guitar go ahead i only had one area in mind 
which was the courtyard area. So the courtyard area was kind of the only thing I knew I wanted in this place. And it just, as you can see, I used live edit objects and we now know from my previous build that I've showed you that live edit objects were no longer a thing in the next draft. So you already know one change that's going to be gone. Um, but I love this courtyard. I loved, I really do love this courtyard. And if there's anything that I would still keep the draft one of, it would be this courtyard, but certain things happen in between. Um, performance wise and gameplay with gameplay in mind changes happen so uh yeah but this courtyard was all i knew that was going to happen i did the courtyard and then i built outwards uh so i had no idea what the front was going to look like which is not normally the way i wow do you like guitar yes you love guitar i don't normally build that way i normally build with the out from the outside inside but this way i did just the complete opposite so yeah, I had fun trying to figure out what this front was gonna look like, to be quite honest. <laughs> um, fun would actually, no, that would that would be an understatement. Uh, but yeah, so the courtyard here, the idea on this one is that you can have multiple weddings here. In reality, in the gameplay, you don't normally have multiple weddings at once, but I thought you could pick between two different wedding venues. You have the interior wedding, and then you have the outdoor wedding as well at the same place. Uh, so yeah, so you come in through here, you have like this little sitting area, your guests can mingle in there first. Plenty of places for Instagrammable moments, don't want, or Simstagrammable moments. Uh, the indoor wedding venue, oh, the courtyard, yes, I had in my mind, but I also knew these like little hallways as well that were gonna lead to the different rooms were gonna be here. And also on my Pinterest rounds, um, the fancy tile work was one of the main things I knew I wanted to do. So the main struggle here was like thinking of which ones combined. And of course you have like a different center one here than you have here. And yeah, that was kind of like my main that was my main focus, I think, was flooring and this courtyard. But we have the indoor wedding and it has a uh, humongous skylight at the top. Does it stay that big? Wow, okay. We have a humongous skylight. So if you were interested in, say it was raining on your wedding day, unfortunately, uh, but you can still have your wedding here and it still have all the light coming in. Here, even if it isn't raining, in the sunset, the light coming through is kind of epic on the walls. I think it will make really great screenshots. With these, with this wedding venue and with the next wedding venue that I created, I was constantly going down to eye level to make sure that you had the best photos possible. So that was that was the aim of these is just going down the eye level and making sure everything looks amazing at eye level so that all of your screenshots look great from this uh venue uh, then we have this extra seating area for the outdoor wedding just in case it's raining you know it's more outdoor uh tables and everything a bar and then we have this outdoor wedding venue and i got down to this eye level as you can see great screenshots from here um more seating everything the pergola out here yeah this was just kind of all grew organically from the courtyard the courtyards was a start and just everything just spanned around it i didn't want it to end up being too blocky you know like um sometimes in courtyard buildings they can end up being absolutely huge because you're trying to fit this courtyard in the middle but i didn't want it to be that big and then from the outside, you have access up to the top, up to the two changing rooms. So we have one that's a bit more pink up here, which I think is adorable. And then my favorite room has to be this all white version. I think I was able to pull it off because we have like these dark floors. So all the white looks really good. Sometimes lots of white can be crazy, but this place just looks epic in the sunset time as well so you can have yourself a little like sunset wedding um here 
or in the next venue that I'm going to show you after we've gone through all the changes in this. But yeah, this is the main gist of this one. And now I'm going to be back with the final draft and talk through all of the changes that I made. Okay, here we are in the fourth and final draft of the wedding venue. I still actually, we I don't think no, I know the name of the wedding venue at the moment. Um, that's still to be determined, but the working title is GP11 underscore FL underscore WED02. So this is it. The fourth and final draft it is now a wedding venue. So I put, brought my last little um, sim here, testing sim here for the wedding venue. So no more uh, mailbox outside. So first one that was is a common thread was remove all the live edit objects they were gone the trees were banished they were removed um so now it's only regular seating seating regular uh trees and everything and bushes and decorative items i used lots of live edit objects here and i had to say bye-bye um of course the main tear rolled down for the ivy that is now departed rip uh to the ivy uh of course you can always put it back you know how it looks uh, i would highly recommend the ivy um and then one of the first proper edits apart from live edit was to make this balcony just one tile deeper so that your sims can actually walk out there i had it only one tile deep and it was like, no, let's have it. So again, a great place for you to take some screenshots up here. So it now has two tiles. I just brought it out a little bit and just edited the front here, uh, just to bring it out a little bit. And it looks basically the same, but now you have the added functionality of being able to walk out here. You could put a chair out there. You can do whatever you like. You can pose for your, if you've got some amazing wedding poses, you can use those out here on this balcony. Um, and then the next edit was to remove the door that used to be, there used to be a great door here with a balcony over, over um, the courtyard. I thought again, that's kind of cute, but it's not so great having doors that lead to nowhere. Um, it can, I think, cause routing issues. So that had to be removed. So we just have the uh, windows up here now. And then also I had, uh, several i think different types of window boxes here to here um it was either mix and match them more or make them all the same so i decided to make them all the same and give you a little pop of pink along the way and then there was an issue of uh the first draft there used to be a wall here and these doors were like basically at either end and it's kind of like the arches with the closed doors here don't really make sense because you know you can just there's so many ways to get around that uh, so we just opened it up got rid of the wall that used to be here and the doors and just opened it up a little bit um and then what else was there um to mix up and maybe reduce the aisle seating a little bit so you can say this has changed the wedding arch has changed because didn't have the the this wedding arch when i did draft one so it was like a placeholder of the original base game wedding arch by the way fyi that has extra swatches now um so it can make it a whole lot more useful um i would even consider leaving that one here but we've changed it up for a new one again the color palette because it looks like this venue here was very similar to this one they had a very similar color palette one of the notes was to kind of make it look a little bit more different so the indoor is pink and creams and whites and then the outdoor one is more reds and greens and is that orange i'm gonna call it orange um just mixing that up and it's just a little bit more punchy and a bit more vivid. Um, so you have two different styles of weddings in the same place. Not only are is one indoor and one outdoor, but they have different color schemes, of course. You can quickly change the color schemes if you don't like the color schemes, you can quickly change them up. Um, and then what else? We have um, 
In here, there used to be tables with rugs directly underneath. I think I also have a lighting right above the tables and it looked a bit too samey, samey, matchy, matchy. Uh, so we got rid of the rugs. And of course you can see that the color palette has completely changed. I was also able to add in one of these new humongous bouquet arrangements in here as well. So we're happy to be able to do that. And this bucket here where you could do toasts. So um, that's at the head table. The uh, happy couple will be here and they can do toasts and everything and everyone can walk up and toast. And then there's um, this table that you can put the cake on. And also here is a banqueting table. You can have a fountain. I, I presume it's, n is it nectar or is it just punch that streams down in this? And then you can have all of your other food around there as well. So that's that one. And then we have this outdoor area, I think, I'm gonna say that uh, since I submitted this, I submitted this maybe a week ago, I have had some feedback that um, I have a few too many objects on this lot still. After all of these drafts, we still have a few too many. Um, so I think uh, for performance issues, I thought maybe we could remove like an, a row of chairs maybe uh, from the indoor and the outdoor. Uh, there were some routing issues with these chairs. I think this was too close to the wall and Sims couldn't get in and out of these chairs as fluid as you would like. So I said to remove these lights and move everything a half a tile um, and maybe remove this outdoor thing. So warning, the final one may not have this pergola. If it comes down to stuff removed, I have suggested those things be removed as this outdoor seating and the last row of chairs on each each aisle. So fingers, I don't I don't think fingers crossed. I think they're gonna be gone. Um, but yeah, those are the main things that were changed in like draft one. Draft two, it was suggested because we are not gonna have the vines here that maybe I could put this uh, new plaque that comes with the pack as well. It comes in lots of different colors, but this was the one that was most appropriate. It has different designs. It was the same one you saw in the fancy villa in the bedroom. Uh, but yeah, it has all different colors, but I think the white one's the most appropriate. I could also have done the pink. I'm not gonna lie. But the white does look good against the brick, so we're gonna leave. We'll leave the white is the way it ends up being. Um, then we have I had a, quite a few pink trees and they were felt like they popped out a bit too much against the rest of the landscape. It's all very green and everything. So I just changed out some of the pink trees for green ones. Um, and then also I used to have a big old four tile bar here with wooden stools um, that kind of clashed with these um, dining chairs and table. So I, the suggestion was maybe to put this new bar here instead and have it as a standing bar instead. Then we didn't have the weird clash of stool versus chair, which I think was a great idea. Uh, much prefer this as well. It's a nice little cute two tile bar, which you don't get those too often. And then what else is there? Um, again, I had to reduce, um, the seating again all of the time reduce seating um you don't want there to be too much seating in here because it'll um look a little bit too empty when you only have about 12 sims on the lot for your wedding so yeah that's that's why i had to reduce it again and then what else have we got um oh i used to have outdoor benches facing inwards um they framed the wedding arch very nicely, but they weren't really uh, adding anything. And also you, your Sims couldn't sit there to watch the venue. So it just didn't really make sense. Uh, so those are removed, but that is all of the things that were removed from this or changed. Overall, I think it was pretty, oh, and I also put this roof here because potentially this could break in the rain. So future proofing for seasons, uh, making sure that that is there. And then, yeah, that's about it. I think, is this smaller? Is it it's still stayed large? Okay, then. <laughs> I had no idea my skylight was that huge. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty much the same as 
beginning, apart from maybe the vines. The vines really did help. Uh, so I personally, if you have jungle adventures, get together, something like that. I'd be schlepping those vines all over this place because I, I think it benefits from having some vines. But yeah, that's it. Oh, and I totally didn't point out that in the first place I had a rug here because it was a placeholder for the dance floor. Um, but yeah, this is now the Fike final dance floor here. It comes with lots of different swatches. Uh, but this was the one that looked great here. So yeah, that is everything. And now we're going to move on to the final lot that I built. This is actually 04, Wed 04. Um, so it was tray, pre made lots, 40 by 50, it was meant to be, suggest room, see description, household none. So the story was we want our tray files to tell a worldwide wedding story with builds from all over. Maxis will sync up with you to approve your ideas. We want an at least one Indian and one Chinese themed wedding venue. So those were definitely handled by Catherine Gaming and Ice Manman because uh, they were respectively from India and um, Taiwan. So wanted to make sure that those were authentic so those two handled those ones i was not about to put my um hat in the ring for that one and then requirements place to put cake all the normal stuff bathrooms wedding venue speaker all that kind of stuff so with this one i did not do like changing places i just felt like it should be a beach venue this is the final one you're gonna see in a second that the first draft did not look anything like this um so yeah i hopefully fingers crossed um i think this one is going to say the same the story behind this one was i had to pitch you had to basically pitch your ideas of what you wanted to do for the tray files they were meant to be multicultural and i think i heavily wanted to do that so i pitched a different ones i think a spanish um wedding venue like outdoor wedding venue I pitched normal ones and then I pitched a wild card third one, which was this beach wedding lot. Um, originally, well, not originally, it still is. This lot in the world is completely empty uh, for performance issues. They need to leave like two empty lots. So uh, this was gonna be empty, but I thought you guys would really, really want a um, beach venue from the bat. So that's why I suggested that we have a tray file so the other ones are kind of made for the wedding venue, the 40 by 50 lot. So that was my previous lot to be placed on there. Um, also, I think Simulacy's one is built for Newquest on that 40 by 50 there, fits perfectly. Um, but this one is was a special one, it's a different size, so it's designed to be placed on this beach lot, which is 40 by 20, which is just a little bit of a headache to produce a lot on that size so you're going to see my struggle in a little bit um yeah i'm going to pass over to pass harry now 
Okay, here we are in the third and final lot, the tray file. So this will not be in game by default. You will have to place this. There'll be a whole bunch of tray files for you to download. Well, that will be in the gallery when you uh, get this pack and you'll be able to place them in not only this world, but in different worlds. I know that Missy's done an amazing one that she uh, was inspired to do for New Crest. So you can place these anywhere in any world that you see fitting. Uh, so this one, I thought I really wanted to volunteer as tribute to do a beach lot because um, this lot in the world is to be kept free um for performance issues they like to have like one free lot in each neighborhood and this was the lot that was going to be free and i thought you can't have a destination wedding without a beach wedding um so yeah i suggested that maybe instead of doing another lot for that big 50 by 40 in the world instead of because i've already doing the wedding lot there that maybe i did a different lot which would be this beach lot so um this is the first draft this lot is a little bit different to the other two that I showed you in terms of there are so many changes in this. Each draft was completely different. Let's just say you're going to get whiplash from the changes. But um, because I struggled quite a bit with this lot and I don't know why, I think it's the sh it's 40 by 20 landscape ways. And I just, it, yeah, it was a, it was a struggle. But um, I suppose I should just show you it. This is the first draft. Um, it's it's it wanted to be a Mediterranean wedding venue, so my struggle was to try and divide the spaces. As you can see, it like walks down. You have I think the fancy villa somewhere in the background. There's the fancy villa, and you can look down. You have this. You can have this beach wedding here. This is where it's meant to be placed. Um. And my main issue, please ignore the mailbox, it's because I have a sim living here and it's residential for building. Um, I was trying to divide the space and have it look like the lot was full. And to do that, I ended up using a lot of live edit objects. Now we all know by this point that live edits banned. Um, so I, yeah, those will be going very, very shortly, but we have like, three different zones so we have like the first zone where you have the aisle again lots of seatings i put this placeholder wedding arch here because uh we only had uh this one and the other base game one with extra swatches in it at the beginning we have these petals down here which is in the aisle and then we have this other space which was like meant to look more bohemian-esque i suppose and um put all of these room dividers here again I, I my main focus on this first draft was trying to divide the space up appropriately <laughs> that was my main thing um so yeah again we put like rugs down here it's put more paved in this area i was very conscious on like leaving this having the aisle uh be orientated this way so that it backed onto the water so that when you do your screenshots of course you want the water in the background you're having a beach wedding you probably don't want to see this in the background of your beach wedding you want to see this um so that was the what, what how i divided the space into three spaces this way rather than the other way um naturally i wanted to run this aisle like the aisle the wedding arch be here and the aisle go the length but your view would not be as great having it here so yeah that's why we've done it this way then your little seating area chill zone you've got your bar again a placeholder because i knew the final bar was coming and then we have like this more permanent built-in area kind of like family style dining one big meant to be one big long table all the way down the middle you'll notice with all of these drafts first drafts not just mine but basically everybody else's that was building um that we all put a hell of a lot of seating in way more than was required so um that is a common trait we've all done and yeah so again i was half happy with this first draft it looks stunning don't get me wrong 
but it's not really appropriate for this particular space I think it just needs to be a little bit more open um so yeah I suppose I should go through some of the comments I think um as I just I think I'll go through the comments and then I'll switch you through to draft two. So some of the comments for this first draft were remove live edit objects, obvi. Uh, there was some clipping of the trees here and possibly using a different wedding arch. Um, I think it wasn't in the game yet, but the suggestion to use is kind of like more driftwoody uh, wedding arch. And then um, the outer edge of this seating was super colorful and passes the squint test. I don't know if I, if you remember this from last time I talked about the squint test on the cottage living. If you squint and you can still distinguish between colors, it passes the squint test. But if you squint at this and it all kind of merges into one and nothing pops out at you, then fail the squint test and you need to add in some color. And the edges passed the squint test, but the middle didn't. So it was kind of injects some color into the middle. I have to say on this lot, you can't really see it this much now it's not too bad but when i was building the sand being that color and the bright sunshine was really washing out some of the items i was putting in which is why it's probably actually a lot more color in this than i was originally planning i think i would have just loved like greens and whites but this lot really needs color to be packed in otherwise it just all gets washed out this is not a location for an all-white wedding uh, it just yeah it just doesn't look so great um and then their feedback was very beautiful uh with the three defined spaces but it's less flowy than we would expect from a beach venue and maybe combine areas and move towards the center of the lot those were the suggestions and now i'm going to show you what i came up with for draft two Okay, here we are with draft two. As I said, you are going to get whiplash from the changes. This is just, I just bulldozed the whole entire first lot, kept a few of the vibes going, and this is the second draft. Um, we have like completely more, it's more flowy, it's more open. Uh, we have completely different uh aisle and seating area i've kind of combined the idea of the sofas before with the aisle so we've kind of merged two of the areas together and then we have like this um outdoor bar area with the pergola uh, so we still kept one of the pergolas but kind of stripped it back and just had it a lot more relaxed and more rugs to define the space rather than um defining it with all of the plants that I use because I think out here you should not have that many plants still one of the comments on this I'm going to go through in a minute is going to be to remove these plants at the front because still naturally you just wouldn't have plants that close to water um so yeah that was that was that was the main aim and then also in this draft I've helped myself to define the areas by actually using terrain paint um I've used this, which terrain paint is it? I've used this terrain paint to kind of make it look like people have been walking on the sand in certain areas. And I've done that to help me define the different areas in um, on the lot. So yeah, that was one trick that I think I didn't do on the first one, but I definitely did it in the second one. And it really helped it not to look so empty i was kind of in the sims simple it sometimes looks a little bit unfinished but hopefully now just with the simple addition of the terrain paint it looks a little bit more special um so some of the feedback for draft two i'm doing this in a completed format uh was they were not sure on the couch location because sitting here you're gonna have a very strange angle of the um ceremony like you'd have to point to the side and sims do not sit to the side to look they look straight ahead um so that was one of the notes on that and i'll show you in the next draft what we do with it um then it was to potentially replace this pergola with uh, the new pergola that comes with the set um and then to remove as i said the palms that were closer to the water because those don't make as much sense. And then again, they were pushing for 
a different archway. So I did change it to this archway for draft two. Uh, this one came in, it was a new asset that got patched into the game. And um, so I used this one, I think before it was between the Driftwood and this one, and I picked this one. Um, and then I think again, they were asking if I would want to do the Driftwood one. Now, I, I said no to the Driftwood one because to me, it felt a little bit more um, Caribbean style and I was trying to stick it to Mediterranean. Like I would have loved if I had started off with a Caribbean um, beach wedding vibe that I was going for, then sure, I, I would have rolled with it and done that, but I was kind of trying to stick more Mediterranean. So that's why I ended up going with this one. It's just a little bit more classic. Um, and then the tip was to try and add more of these banners, maybe zigzag them. And spoiler alert, I did try that. It sucked, it looked awful. So you will be left, I think, I think it ends up being more, but um, yeah, I didn't manage to zigzag that. So this was draft two. Um, and now we're gonna move on to draft three. Okay, here we are in draft three. We're only in build mode now because uh, this is a proper wedding venue lot and I don't have a sim on here. But again, we have changed <laughs> quite a bit. All of the palms were removed. Um, we removed all the seating, the lounge area, and just put more plants around. Um, yeah, it is quite a bit of a change. This here table, by the way, is meant to be like your guest registry where they sign in and give you congratulations. So uh, that's there. Uh, this was in the last one, the sun lounge is here just in case, you know, you need to chill while you're at the beach. Um, then we've also added back in, did I have this in the last one? I don't think I did. I've added back in this separate seating area. So I've moved everything slightly to the right. This was like more to the, in the center of the lot. I'm pretty sure I centered it in the last draft. Now this one's more over to the right and I've added in this extra little breakout seating area, um, more reminiscent of the original draft one. So we're kind of mix and matching and taking extra bits in. Uh, then we've made, been able to use the new pergola, which was suggested, and the new bar as well, which is in there. And then the seating area, I've made it a little bit, I've ch I changed it. Originally, I think I wanted uh, the kind of like more blocky farm style, um, rustic style tables, but I thought this was a bit more of a classy establishment. So we've done the base game tables with these new chairs. I really, really love these rattan chairs. I'm a, I am a sucker for some rattan and um, so happy that I got to use these on one of my lots. Uh, yeah, and then also the table displays, I don't think where centerpieces weren't here before. Lots of times you'll see I put like flowers everywhere before and those were placeholders for the bouquet arrangements that weren't available yet. Uh, we have this banqueting table so you can put your cake there. You can put a cake on any um, like regular table, like dining table and these, and then they can cut them. Uh, so we've got a fountain one here for your breakout area. So you can just chill here with your little drinks. And again, that can be like filled with food. And yeah, this one, I think we passed the squint test. We've got like these pops of pink everywhere. And yeah, it doesn't look so washed out. And also I forgot to show you in the last one that look how epic it looks at sunset. Um, so I'm pretty sure I heard through the grapevine um, that they have made sure to jiggle it that you can have the most amazing sunset wedding here. So that's tip. If you want a sunset wedding, I would definitely recommend uh, you place this lot or build any lot that you like here on this beach uh, because the screenshots are going to be pretty epic. I, th I just think this lot looks amazing. Also during the night time, like there's just enough lighting to light up everywhere. I think it looks so cute and romantic. If I could use move objects, I put like a hanging chandelier here. Um, but yeah, I think this lot just works really well in all types, all times of the day. And yeah, so I did manage to put in some more of this of these banners here uh, to make it look a bit more festive. Um, 
But yeah, some of the comments from this one was to add in uh, the bar back. There's a, a there's a decorative bar back to be added in um, to remove maybe a chair from the back row here. So we just had a little bit less seating. If you remember the first draft, there was so much more seating, but still we were removing more chairs. Uh, maybe to remove the living chairs from the back here. These aren't, no one's really ever gonna sit there. So um, it's better just to put maybe a more decorative plants there. And then to change, there was a comment to change these uh, dividers to have the white colorway, which I'll show you is this one. And I just think it looks lovely, but I think this place just needs a pop of the pink. Um, they were a little bit concerned, maybe it will look like a Chinese wedding with these dividers up, but I, I think it, I don't think it looks like a Chinese wedding at all with these dividers. And I think um, that it just needs the pop color because this, this lot in particular, I think just really any color you put here gets kind of knocked down several runs. And I think it just, it just needs color because of all of this sand, this sand is very dominating and um, it just needs a color. So I am now going to fast forward and show you the fourth and final draft. Okay, here we are in the fourth and final draft of the beach wedding lot. And yeah, not too much has changed from the last one. We have the bar back in, which was requested. And I think, it, oh, it changed the colorway of the bar. And the dance floor is in. Um, kept it the same. I think I've changed this out. This little, looked a little bit formal. I think I have something else here before. I changed it to this. Um, again, you have like, this is meant to be the welcome to so-and-so and so-and-so's wedding. And then again, we had the same message, but then you can see like what table you're meant to be sitting at. That's like the table plan. These are really cool because they have this and then they always have the table option. And then we just have Nancy Land Grab and you know, Mortimer Goth uh, walking through as you'd normally do. They just walk all over your venue. Um, yeah, and this is this is the final one. I think this one um, passed with flying colors, the performance ratings, because there isn't that much on this lot. Uh, the only thing was maybe that these um, sun lounges might distract. Maybe Sims might want to end up lying laying down here instead of doing other things. But I I don't see anyone verging over there anyway. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the final lot, and it's. I think the first lot, yes, was very very nice, but it just wasn't appropriate for this setting. And I think this is more appropriate. It's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more chill, and I think it it suits this area best. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to kind of get my hands on this pack when it finally comes out and be able to build other wedding venues. Um, so yeah, thank you uh, so, so much for watching. And um, I think I'm going to now hand over to my future self for the outro.